of tell that you're going to have that our guys have to know the what and the why. Because we're going to rush the pump, because we want to be smart, we have to understand what you're doing. And our guys have to spend extra time in order to be understand what you're doing to be successful to come after the punt. We also have to have guys that are smart that are going to make good decisions so that they don't end up running into the punt. So that requires maybe spending a little bit more time. Usually uh, during game week, we do punt block on Tuesdays. Monday night, I'm going to send out notes to each guy that's going to be on punt block of what their responsibility is for the week. So they're going to have to look over that. Tuesday morning, we will have a punt block meeting, whether it's by Zoom or in person depending on the year, obviously. We did it all by Zoom on Tuesday mornings this year. We would have a pump block meeting where we would go through everything that they need to know. Here's the formations they do. Here's their indicator. Here's who does the cadence. Here's how we're gonna get lined up. Then Tuesday afternoon, we would go back through all of that in our special teams meeting. Tuesday at practice, we would run through it at practice. And then Tuesday after practice, we would run through it again with just the live block guys. So the basics of as we're going through the scheme, we're in a loaded stance, we're one foot off the ball. We have one of the, the edge guys that I trust can always check to make sure we're one foot off the ball. We're gonna know who does the cadence or what the snap indicator is. We're gonna know what kind of punt scheme they have. And we're gonna be able to figure out where's the block spot. What's the punter's approach? What is the indicator? There's gonna be some form of indicator. It could be the long snapper's alignment, could be the punter's alignment, could be the wings alignment. A lot of teams obviously go up there and they have somebody give a cadence. Some people go quick or they huddle and then go quick. A lot of people have started to go quicker or huddle because they know we're gonna to try to apply pressure, but some people are gonna go up there, right? If you are a defensive coach and every single time on third down, the quarterback came up and yelled orange, orange. And every time he yelled orange, they ran outside zone. Don't you think your D line and linebackers would pick up on, well, the quarterbacks yelled orange three times now. And every time they run outside zone. Well, if you're a punt team, and every time you come up there and you yell orange and then you roll out to the right, we're going to know you just yelled orange and you ro rolled out to the right. So the second time, we're going to know what you're doing. So we're going to pick up on whatever cadence or whatever tell you can give us. There's some sort of indicator you can get. Obviously, if we can get to the position when that knee draws back to shoot our hand to foot, that's what we're trying to do, shoot hand to foot. If we can't get in position to shoot hand to foot, then we're going to shoot our hand to the sky, just like a D lineman would match the hand of the quarterback and try to get a hand or tip it as it's coming through the air. So that's how we look at it. That's how we do it. This just gives you, um, you know, some ability to be able to see, hey, we're going to move around. We're not always going to be in the same line, whether it's going to be four and four, whether it be four to one side, three to one side and a floater. Could be five to one side, three to another side. We'd prefer to not get in super exotic looks where we have six to one side and two to another where we could talk somebody into running a fake, but it is a lot more likely to get a fake run on you if you're a soft holdup team that doesn't have people forcing the punt. As you, as I did a, in 2019, did a, a fake punt study, an overwhelming majority of fake punts were versus holdup. Now, obviously, most teams are holdup anyways. But it's going to be a lot easier to successfully run a fake punt in a running play, which is easier to do versus a holdup team more times than not, unless you're in an unsound look and you don't have your better defensive players already rushing to go make a play. A lot of times, if you're a pump block team, the, the different fakes you're going to get are going to be some form of screen pass, throwback pass, flat route, skip pass, some, something to do with passes. We got to understand here are the, tip, the, the fakes that we could be susceptible to seeing and being able to stop those different things. But at the same time, they got to have the balls to be able to call it and the guts to be able to call it. And if you got a good fake, then call it and let's see you do it. But you got to also understand and show your guys here are the fakes that we're susceptible to the getting. I don't always know exactly what look we're going to be in because our adjuster and our middle force guy, if they know where the ball is being punted, have the freedom to line up knowing what you're going to do wherever they want. So they might end up lining up in a different look than we even practice because I give those two guys freedom to be able to do it. So right here, all right, 27, got the cadence and knew they were going to roll out. You can see him rolling his hands. Hey, they're going to roll out. They're going to roll out. We end up stemming into an overload look because they all coached each other up. Hey, they're rolling out. And now we're going to be able to pr provide some pressure right at that block spot. So they're all communicating. They know what's going on. Same thing here. We played Memphis last year, all right? We got an indicator. So our guys knew the indicator, 19 um, and 41. We're on the punt safe team here with the defense, and they're also on our punt block team. So we try to put our top guys on both units. So the punt safe team was out there. They got the cadence. There was a penalty on the offense. We threw the punt block team out there. They said, hey, guys, we got the cadence. Here's what, they, here's what they're doing. 
So we're now going to stem around based on the cadence. So you can see 41 and 19 are out there now on the pump block team. They both know what's going on with the cadence. So they check based on the cadence. They check the cadence. So we check where we're going and we run to go to the, the, where the block spot's going to be. They check it again for a third time. Now we run back and they're all communicating and know what's going on. And now we end up getting three on two, which is what we want. We don't unfortunately get the block. It's a missed opportunity, but we force the punt team and we create a chaos by forcing them to extra communicate, by forcing them to check it three times. Now, after this, they're going to get in different formations. They're going to huddle. They're going to go quicker. We're forcing them to do extra work. We're creating some chaos. We're providing some pressure on their punt team. That's how we want to be able to do it. Here's how we do it in practice. We're going to just do a five-yard cover drill. We're going to tell you who's live. Everybody else is, is rushing to their point of the shield, all right? The different cover guys or the guys that have eligibles are going to man those eligibles and we're just working at rapid fire, all right? Backup punters punting the volleyball. We're just working the different formations, getting the cadence down. Who's doing the cadence? What are they doing? How are we going to stem up? How are we going to time it up? All those different things that most people do. And we're going to work through it in practice. That's how we set it up. We'll then always do a full covered coverage rep after that. Then after practice, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, more individual basis with all the specialists lined up in the punt unit. We're just going to go through the different techniques that those guys need to know. Here's what could happen in a fake. Here's what you got to do, uh, knowing how to be successful. And that's just how we're going to rep. So we're going to rep it in smaller groups so these guys can then understand, all right, hey, it's rollout. You're going to you're going to win up and under. You're going to set the edge. Here's how we're going to block it. If you can get hand to foot, then get hand to foot. All right, it's rollout. You can't get hand to foot. You're going to shoot your hand to the sky. You might get a volleyball off your face. We're just after practice having a little fun. You got to put in extra work if you want to be really good at something. It's the same thing. All right, so right here, we keep repping it. We keep repping it. Then in the game, that exact same situation with number four and 82 who are just repping it after practice, get the roll look. One of them comes up and under. He doesn't quite get there, so he shoots his hand to the sky. He gets a fingertip on. The exact same thing that we were looking at, just trying to be able to create some chaos, try to put some extra time into it. All right, same thing. Now, number two and number 19 are working. How are they going to fit on the crease? If it's to the right, here's how we're going to fit on the crease. If it's to the left, here's how we're going to time it up and fit on the crease. Then in the game, exact same thing is going to happen. So we get those exact same two guys. How are they going to fit it on the crease? Be physical. You don't get there. Get your hand up, hand to sky. 19 gets a hand. He blocks. It goes past line of scrimmage, but we still are affecting the punter. We're still affecting the field position. We're doing all those things that we're looking to do. So that gives you some idea of how we rep it, how we practice it, what the scheme looks like that we're trying to do it. People will get into trick formations, this, that. We're going to keep the same 